Second on our list of heavy weapons to go over is the list of the 18 heavy GLs that are non-sunset legendary in Destiny 2 at the current time, Season of the Witch. So uh, let's get on with it. So heavy GLs, uh, much like machine guns, are very singular in what they do, very, very single-minded. Um, they're basically just for DPS right now. Um, some people will claim that they can be used for utility. Some people will claim that they can be used for ad clear. But if we're talking end game PVE and you're thinking like an end game player, uh, if you care about splash ad clear, you're going to be using rockets. Uh, rockets are more ammo efficient for the area that they cover. Uh, with Pack Hunter, it is absolutely no contest. Rockets are much better for ad clear, much higher damage, much more suitable for major burst. So GLs are kind of in this weird scenario where you're only using them for burst damage on bosses. And the only reason they're even viable for burst damage on bosses is for it, you know, basically because Pack Hunter got an interaction nerf and also because Cascade Point now exists on certain GLs. And um, yeah, that, that's basically it. And also because galley players do less damage than, you know, reg regular legendary rocket players. So that's why heavy GLs are kind of relevant uh, in some aspects. I would say for most players in most scenarios, heavy GLs are just completely irrelevant in endgame PvE. Um, but there are some rare instances, and if Bungie continues to buff heavy GLs and uh, moves them in the right direction, gives the needle a little bit uh, more of a push, then heavy GLs will be possibly relevant, more relevant in endgame PvE in the future. So with that being said, uh, let's talk about how I actually scored heavy GLs. So heavy GLs, uh, for those of you that do not know, there are two primary frames. You have rapids and you have adaptives. Adaptives shoot slower, um, but they tend to, well not tend to, they have higher DPS and higher total damage, which is weird. Normally with Bungie, you have one weapon archetype has higher total damage, but it has lower DPS, while the other has higher DPS but lower total damage. This is not so for heavy GLs for whatever reason. Uh, heavy GLs, adaptives are just better in every way besides having smaller mag sizes. So with that in mind, we decided to put adaptives at one point and rapids at zero. Uh, there's also one special guest, you know, dimensional hypotrachoid. This thing is a compressed waveframe. Um, now, you know, using a heavy waveframe for ad clear is not really efficient compared to just using something like forbearance. Um, so this thing is basically just for damage and this thing no longer works for damage against Riven because her, you know, something about projectiles and physics interactions and activating multiple times inside of an enemy was changed recently with this season. And so Hypertrichoid has basically nowhere to go. Uh, if you want to use it for boss damage, it's actually not horrible, even if you're just using, you know, shooting at the floor at like a normal waveframe. Um, but it's certainly not great. So I just decided to give it zero points. Um, or actually, I believe I give it minus one points. Yeah, it, it is lower DPS than Rapid, and um, there's only one option, right? And you're not really, you know, using a waveframe against a projectile GL, like a typical projectile direct impact GL. That limits your options in, in terms of what bosses you can actually use it on to begin with. Not all bosses are going to be on the ground, and of the bosses that are going to be on the ground, not all of them are going to cooperate with a linear wave traveling uh, across the ground towards them. So that is Archetype. And then perks. So because this is essentially a DPS only weapon uh, in PvE, in endgame PvE, uh, there's only really two kind of perk categories you need to worry about. There's ammo and there's damage. And when I say ammo, I mean, um, obviously, you know, <laughs> GL's done it four times a charm or anything like that. So we're going to prioritize uh, ammo perks that give us the biggest mag size. So Envious Assassin, Clown Cartridge, uh, well, Clan Cartridge is much smaller than that, but Envious Assassin, Reconstruction, and anything that auto loads. So, auto loading holster, um, you know, demo, simulated reload, stuff like that. So, that's what we prioritized. And then for damage perks, um, anything that assists with bursts, because heavy GLs have a burst kind of identity for DPS. So, stuff like, you know, Surrounded, Cascade Point. Uh, explosive light, you know, stuff that maybe only lasts for one mag or temporarily, but really, really increases damage by a very, very high percentage. Okay, so um, in terms of points, in terms of scoring, ammo perks, we decided to split it this way. Clown and demo get one each. Field prep and auto loading get two each because of the existence. Well, you might be asking, you know, field prep doesn't increase your max size. Why do you care? Radiant dance machines and rain of fire can augment, uh, you know, GLs that don't have a mag extension perk. So field prep ha having increased reserves is helpful in some instances. And then you have reconstruction, which also got a two and envious assassin, which gets a three. Envious assassin gets a three because on pretty much every jail type, you can load practically the entirety of the reserves into a mag with a uh, backup mag mod swap. So pretty powerful stuff. 
And um, yeah, we're also going to ignore any reload and ammo perks in the fourth column because the fourth column in every single GL is the damage column and that there's no exceptions to that, unlike machine guns, where you might have some uh, machine guns with damage perks in the third column instead of the fourth column. Uh, for damage perks in terms of scoring distribution, Frenzy and Vorpal got one. Full Court also gets a one because of how extremely situational and annoying it is to use. And Explosive Light gets a 2 because it requires orbs to have a consistent damage perk. And also, you know, again, only lasts for like 6 or 7 shots, depending on if it's enhanced or not. And um, yeah, and then you have Cascade Point, which is a 3. It's a 66 percent, 67 whatever, 66 percent uh, DPS increase. You have Bait and Switch, which lasts for an entire reserve dump of a GL, which is quite valuable. And then you have Surrounded, which also technically lasts for an entire reserve dump. It's just more situational, but it exists as the highest uh, damage perk on a heavy GL at 47%. Uh, if there was no damage perk on the weapon, given that this is strictly a DPS weapon, uh, we decided to drain it of one perk. And uh, sorry, one perk, one point. Uh, minus one point if there's no damage perk. Um, as for affinity, best in slot, stuff like that, doesn't really apply to heavy GLs. And uh, normally for DPS weapons, you'd be wanting to surge match, but this takes the place of Apex Predator and Galahorn. So um, you'd be matching your other weapons with this weapon rather than the other way around. So surge matching is not the biggest deal in the world. Some considerations for mono this season, but I'm not going to include them in this tier list because I think they're pretty minor and pretty obvious. So I don't, I don't think I really need to say anything about that. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually uh, talk about each GL here. So let's start with Behringer's Memory. That's this guy right here. Now this guy, um, you know, some people were coping when it first came out, uh, trying to use Pulse Monitor so you can reload this thing, shoot the ground, shoot your feet in a well, get this thing to reload and keep shooting. Those days are long gone. This thing has no damage perk. You'll notice actually that there is a very, very significant shift in how heavy GLs are designed. Uh, about half of the GLs on this list have stuff like auto loading clown and field, and then there's just no damage perk at all, right? You'll have auto clown field scattered in the third and fourth columns, a bunch of PVP type perks, and then no damage perk. So you'll see that there's a very, very big shift in how Bungie designed heavy GLs. Uh, probably they're reeling from the shock of Swarm of the Raven still, not wanting to create another situation like that. But you'll see that half these GLs are really bad. Some of them are okay. And then some of them are really good, the most recent ones. So there's a huge recency bias here um, on, on Bungie's part, I guess. So uh, yeah, starting with Behringer's Memory, I don't think I need to say much about this thing. It has Field, Clown, and Auto. I mean, Auto being in the fourth column is a little quirky, I guess. You know, Field Auto isn't like horrible, I guess. I don't know, Field Demo. Yeah, this thing is no damage perk. I don't really need to say much more. It's just D tier. No damage perk, D tier, right? Like, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, okay, next up we have Blast Bat 2. Blast Bat 2, Blast Bat 2. This thing is an arc adaptive frame GL, and uh, again, I there's no damage perk. Okay, there's no, there, there's auto loading again. Clown auto. It's one of those the same thing, same thing. Okay, D tier, D tier. Boom. Not much to say. Let's keep going. Canis Major, Canis Major. This thing came out I think during Season of the Lost. Uh, it's a solar rapid fire frame. I think this was the turning point for heavy GLs. This is when Bungie realized, okay, we got to start boosting these things a little bit. Um, you can start to see, you know, you know, Vorpal kind of creep in. Um, I think this thing was, no, this thing wasn't craftable, but yeah, I think this thing was the turning point for heavy GLs. Um, I kind of distinctly remember people talking about this and the next season and the seasons after that, they started introducing, uh, more heavy GLs that were, uh, more suitable for endgame content. Hi Sod, what's going on, man? Uh, okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Candice Major. It's like Field Vorpal, Clown Vorpal. Um, not much to say about this thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, C tier, right? Has a, has a damage perk. But uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty. It's a pretty bad damage perk. Um, okay, moving on. Cataphract GL3. So we we've been filling up the C and D tier so far in this list. Uh, this thing though is a big jump up. A big jump up. Uh, let's actually, you know, let's let's go over its perk pool, right? Uh, first of all, this thing is an adaptive strand heavy GL, and its perk pool is easily the most insane thing I have ever seen on any heavy GL. Uh, it is hard to make this thing any more stacked than it already is. The only way you could probably make this thing more stacked is giving it surrounded and making it craftable. That is the only thing you could do to this thing to make it better, maybe giving it a slightly better affinity for better mono compatibility. But besides that, this thing is ridiculously stacked with perks. So it has Envious, which is the best heavy GL ammo perk. It has field prep for reserves. It has auto. It has demo. 
Um, you know, I'm not the biggest fans of auto and demo, mostly because Envious and Field are just better in general. Uh, a lot of people think auto and bait and switch are synergistic perks, but realistically speaking, bait and switch lasts 10 seconds. You can dump all 19 shots in 10 seconds. So there's no reason to use auto loading holster. Envious is just better. And swapping to another weapon is going to be DPS loss. And the thing is with bait and switch, uh, in team settings, you're not going to be getting that first shot buffed. So every single time you have to reproc bait or there's some sort of awkwardness in the timing of refreshing your timer because uh, it's, you know, it's run out and you need to switch your, to your other weapons, you're going to be losing damage. So realistically, this thing, Envious Bait, is like an absolute crazy roll on this thing. But it also has Explosive Light for burst damage. Explosive Light is a higher perk, uh, higher damage bonus perk than Bait and Switch, but only for one mag. So, you know, that exists for burst damage. You also have Cascade Point, and then of course, you know, Full Court and Vorpal, which are kind of like whatever perks. But this thing is absolutely stacked. Uh, no doubt, S tier. No doubt this thing goes in the S tier. Very, very solid GL. Um, now, you know, I'm not... <laughs> again, like I've said before in some of my other lists, uh, an S tier GL is not the same thing as an S tier rocket. This thing may be the best overall heavy GL in the game for damage. That does not mean that heavy GLs are incredibly important. Uh, heavy GLs as an archetype are very trodden down right now. They're not something that you should be really considering as something that's very important to have in your arsenal for end game content. But that is that being said, you know, it is it is the best heavy GL that there is right now. Overall, overall. We're gonna go over why I'm, why I say overall in a second. But yeah, so that's Cataphract GL3. I've yapped a lot about that. Let's uh, move on to Crowd Pleaser. So back to the Land of Disappointment. Um, this thing, I believe, is Gambit. Yeah, I got a reworked perk pool. But uh, yeah, again, yeah, no damage perk, guys. No damage perk. Uh, we're going to put this thing in the C tier, though, because it does have uh, some more perk diversity than some of the other weapons here. And I believe it's also an adaptive frame. So some of the, some of the D tier weapons, this thing does have a little bit more uh, perk diversity going for it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, moving on, we have Crime Mutiny. This thing was a, where is it? Sorry, Crime Mutiny is over here. Uh, this thing was a ritual slash pursuit weapon. Uh, and it has Demo Vorpal, right? Incandescent's not really relevant, neither is Swash. Demo Vorpal, you know, not bad. You know, it's like a, it's a like baby's first heavy GL. I mean, it doesn't have spike grenades, um, but it does, it does have a pretty big mag, right? I mean, like, um, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's Demo Vorpal. It's Demo Vorpal, you know? Not great. Has an okay reload perk. Has a bad damage perk. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna be surprised. We're gonna put this thing in the C tier. Alright, uh, what do we got next? We have... Dimensional Hypotrichoid. So this is the wave frame I was discussing earlier. Uh, this thing used to be on Riven. We used to use this thing on Riven uh, in speedruns and, you know, endgame PvE players, just people that do wish a lot. Um, you'd bounce it off the wall and it would bounce a bunch of times in her, in her folds, in the folds of her body, do a lot of damage. But now, uh, with the physics interaction changes that happened uh, at the start of the season, no longer possible. And you, if you want to use this thing for boss damage, you're basically going to shoot at the ground near a boss, which, uh, pretty bad, pretty bad. This thing sucks now for damage. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put it, um, probably at the top of C tier. The scoring system put it at a B tier, but um, just knowing how this gun works and the fact that it's a compressed waveframe, um, you know, the damage isn't as bad as you might think, given that it's designed to be like a sort of ad clear archetype, but um, it's still, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's just not very good. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I think it actually deserves to be in B tier. I think the scoring system is actually correct because uh, it does have Envious Assassin and that does allow you to shoot these things all, pretty much the entire reserves in one go. And even if it does have lower DPS than rapid and, uh, and you know, adaptive archetypes, if you're comparing it to some of the stuff down here, just being able to shoot it repeatedly in a row like that is probably more valuable. Um, yeah, pro just probably more valuable in general. Uh, okay, moving on. Oh, we have Interference 6. Interference 6. Interference 6 is, this was probably like, you know, the, the stopgap for a lot of people when it comes to, hey, what's like the next OP heavy GL that's not Wendigo? A lot of people turn to Interference 6. Unfortunately, this thing's only like usable damage perk is Full Court, and Full Court sucks. Yeah, Full Court kind of sucks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the... I think it's in the B tier. Yeah, I think it's in the B tier. Yeah, sort of at the top of B tier. I mean, it has an okay damage perk and it has auto field clown, which are all decent perks. Uh, and it's a very, very small, very small perk pool, right? That doesn't account for scoring, but you know, very, very small perk pool. 
so it's kind of just decent um now that being said you know holistically looking at the sandbox in general would you ever use this thing no if you had this thing in your vault you would shard it but um the fact that it's a b tier gl just kind of goes to show you how abysmal gls are right now yeah really only the, the top two tiers are even close to usable when it comes to gls so next up we have caraxis's distress uh, um this thing is from ron rather recent addition to the heavy gl field in destiny 2 um and yeah it has a lot of pretty good perks it's craftable it has field envious recon demo and it also has you know frenzy surrounded as well as full court so you know this thing is basically just a worse version of cataphract except for one thing it has enhanced surrounded it has enhanced surrounded enhanced surrounded is a 47 percent damage increase um and you just need to be surrounded right so this thing is actually the highest uh the highest dps gl in the game that does not use cascade point so this thing technically despite having a worse archetype than cataphract it is a rapid it has higher total damage and it has higher uh dps than bait and switch envious cataphract so that's why i said earlier cataphract is the best overall gl because you can use it in any circumstance with envious bait this thing is technically slightly better and uh, i think in some low man scenarios um stuff like trio sanctified i think um caraxis could be usable uh i was being discussed earlier uh in an ammo limited scenario or in a scenario where you don't want to use galley this thing is capable of you know pumping and dumping like two mil damage in a very very short time on templar um so yeah pretty solid uh i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in the a tier yeah it's situational but at this point all heavy gls are situational so i'm not gonna I mean, you know i'm not gonna mark that against it all right, next up we have Love and Death. Love and Death. This is a Moon Heavy GL. It's a Rapid Solar, right? And we've got uh, Auto Field Clown, which is I'm sure is familiar to some of you, except it has Full Court. So this is kind of similar to those perk pools that you've seen where it's just Auto Field Clown and no damage perk, except for it does have a damage perk. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the B tier. This thing deserves to be... Um, we're looking at Love and Death, right? Yeah, this thing deserves to be right up next to Interference. Um, they're practically the same gun, actually. Um, it's just that, you know, Love and Death is a Rapid instead of a um, an Adaptive, so it goes a little bit lower. That's pretty much it. Let's move on to Marsilion C. Okay, so Marsilion C is supposed to be craftable. The pattern is in the API, but the pattern was never distributed to players, and it is now an open world drop. Which is a, a shame, because this thing's perk pool is actually amongst the best perk pools in Heavy GLdom. Uh, which is kind of funny because no one really talks about this thing. I don't think I've seen anybody talk about this thing. It has Field, which is okay. You know, it's pretty good. And then we have Envious, which I said like before, Envious is absolutely the best heavy GL perk for damage. And then of course we have Vorpal, Meh, Explosive Light, good. And then we have Cascade Point. We have Cascade Point. So this is actually uh, a, a rapid fire frame heavy GL with Envious Assassin and Cascade Point. So this is actually the highest DPS heavy gel in the game for a short period of time. So it is actually, you know, something worth noting. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to grind. There's no way to target farm this thing. Um, but, you know, if you happen to get a good roll and you don't have something like a cataphract, which a lot of people don't because it was, you know, you have to farm trials to get that. Um, this is a usable substitute. Uh, it does not have bait and switch. Obviously, it does not have surrounded. But uh, it has Cascade for burst damage, and uh, it has Explosive, which is decent, and it has Full Core, which is annoying, but, you know, usable. So, there you have it. There you go. Marsilion C. We're going to put this thing at the top of A tier. At the top of A tier. Okay, next up, we have Memory Interdict. Memory Interdict. That's this one. I love using this thing in PvP. One of my favorite PvP heavy GLs, unfortunately, for Memory Interdict. This is a PvE tier list, and that means that... It has pretty much no relevant perks for PvE. The second column has nothing, nothing, nothing of note for PvE, for damage, and uh, it has auto clown. So this is, you know, an artifact of the past. And as a result, we're going to put this thing in the D tier, right with all the other uh, heavy GLs that essentially have the exact same perk pool. Um, all right, next up, we have Outrageous Fortune. Yeah, this one is definitely, definitely not an Outrageous Fortune if you happen to get this. Uh, which you can't anymore, I think, but, uh, it's auto field and yeah, no damage perk. I don't think we need to talk about this one. I'm not going to waste your time. It's here. Okay. And we have our last five GLs, uh, some of which are kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and talk about them. So we have Regnant. 
Regnant Pregnant. Uh, this thing is an adaptive Void GL. So off to a good start. It's an adaptive. It has Envious and Auto and it's craftable. And it has Cascade Point and Explosive Light, which are both pretty decent perks. Um, I considered actually mentioning One For All as a perk for like solo stuff, but that's too niche and I kind of preferred to talk about more uh, broad scenarios where you can use this in a fire team. Obviously, if everybody on your team is trying to proc One For All before damage or something like that, you know, it's not great. Uh, but again, this thing has Envious Cascade, uh, much like Marsilion does, except for it is craftable and it is an adaptive. So it is even more, uh, you know, more of a, a good candidate for something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put Regnant in the A tier right next to Marsilion. Um, this thing is pretty good. Again, it's kind of got like a specialist role, like Envious Cascade, Envious Explo. But again, you know, Heavy GLs are specialists at this point. So I have no problem with giving it the high score that it deserves. Okay, next up we have Swarm of the Raven. Swarm of the Raven. Now this thing does have Envious Assassin, but unfortunately it has it in the fourth column. So I was forced to ignore it. Uh, it is a rapid fire frame, just like the OG Swarm of the Raven was after it got changed from an aggressive. And uh, it has Clown Field Auto Demo. So a series of solid reload perks. No Envious in that column, unfortunately. And it has Cascade Full Court. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It has Cascade Full Court. So, you know, it's basically like some of these other GLs, except for it's a Rapid and it has no Envious. And so it's only two damage perks are Cascade and Full Court, which are not a great look, but Auto Cascade is still not horrible uh, at the end of the day. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the A tier, bottom of A tier, not, not near Regnant because it's not, a, not an adaptive, not near Marsilion because it doesn't have Envious, but we're going to put it in the A tier uh, nonetheless. It's certainly, the, the, I just want to make this thing, you know, really clear. S tier is Cataphract tier because it's overall, because of bait and switch, applicable to most scenarios. You have A tier, which is more the specialists that have focused on cascade points, surrounded, stuff like that. And then B tier is not even worth considering. Just to make sure, just to make clear on this tier list, I probably should have restructured the labeling system, but B, C, and D tier are non-starters. All of them are non-starters. I mean, to be fair, if you're an endgame player, most of my tier list, B, C, and D tier, you shouldn't really be looking at, but heavy GLs in particular, B, C, and D tier are not even worth like, like looking at. Like don't even look at their perk pools. It's that bad. So S and A tier are really the ones that you should be looking at if you're looking at heavy GL DPS. And that's, you know, already a specialized niche to begin with. Okay. So uh, let's keep going. We only have three GLs left. Uh, let's look at Tarnation next. So Tarnation is a Throne World. Um, oh, sorry, a Wellspring. Well, I guess technically Throne World, but a Wellspring Rapid Fire GL. Um, this thing is, it's got Danger Zone which is, um, you know, craftable danger zone, which is kind of nice if you're a wish speedrunner uh, for, you know, if, if you want to do that. <laughs> if you're a normal player and you're just doing endgame PvE, uh, there is pretty much no reason to use this thing. It has uh, field, it has clown, and then it has no relevant damage perk. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing where it belongs in the D tier, flat in the D tier right there next to Outrageous. Uh, given how recent this thing is, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You know, you'd expect better out of a year five weapon, but pretty bad. All right, moving on, we're down to our last two weapons. Uh, I believe they're both Omelon weapons, which is uh, kind of nice, I suppose. Uh, we have the Typhon GL5 and the Wendigo GL3. Now, speaking of endgame content, you know, and wish speedrunning, um, I actually prefer, I think a lot of people prefer the Typhon GL5 to the Tarnation. It's not craftable, but it has Demo Wellspring, which is really nice for getting your nade back in wish speedrunning. Um, I'm not going to consider that as anything related to its scoring. I just wanted to, you know, put that in as a little bit, a little bit of trivia. But in terms of actual damage, um, this thing is an adaptive frame, stasis heavy jail with a standard max size, and it has demo explosive light. It also has frenzy and chill clip and AJ and one for all, but those aren't really relevant. Demo explosive light is what you're going to be going for on this thing if you want to use it. And, um, you know, it doesn't have any other good roles, but that role alone is good enough to put it uh in the b tier in the b tier so yeah demo explosive light i'm gonna put this thing probably right around here somewhere yeah pretty solid um i would actually say that it deserves to be you know given that the gl role is like burst dps i would get i would say that it deserves to be above uh interference i don't think it gets to play with the big boys up here though uh it's just barely bad enough okay and finally we have wendigo gl3 uh a nightfall weapon i think a lot of people farm for this thing uh you know warden of nothing farms uh, right before the next season was going to drop in anticipation for a heavy GL buff. Heavy GLs got buffed and then no one used this thing. No one, this thing started collecting dust in people's vaults. No one gave a crap about this thing and probably for good reason. It's, um, 
not very good. <laughs> it's not very good. Um, mostly because heavy GLs are not very good. Um, that being said, you know, it does have Cascade Point. This was the first heavy gel with Cascade Point. And if we're going to talk surge matching, which I said I wouldn't score for, but if we're going to talk surge matching, this thing does match fourth horseman and it matches Cloud Strike, which are both very, very appropriate weapons to be using in a Cascade Point rotation. So a lot of people do prefer this as the premier Cascade Point option. And so, you know, as a result, it's not bad at that at all. No Envious Assassin, but it does have Auto Field and Clown, which are all nice. And uh, it also has Explosive Light, right? Um, full court again, pretty bad. Frenzy, okay, whatever. Uh, Tricorn, too niche to really, you know, be talking about that. So yeah, we're left with Cascade Point and Explosive Light, Auto Field, Clown. Not a bad perk pool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the A tier. I think it, um, you know, given its its spread of perks, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put it up here. Um, yeah. I mean, the fact that no one really uses Wendigo, despite the fact that uh, I, I'm putting it at the top of A tier, really just goes to show you that uh, Heavy GLs are not in the best spot right now. Um, I, I really think they could do with a reserve buff, as well as uh, probably a DPS buff as well. Um, but besides that, you know, I think I think Heavy GLs, I, I would like for Bungie to lean further into their uh, potential as a burst damage option, um, given how pitiful their, their total damage is right now. Um, I think we're moving in that direction, and I think we're getting some nicer heavy GL options. And uh, I think the galley rework certainly made people start turning their heads towards stuff like Cataphract and Caraxes for certain encounters where you're using under six people. Um, but besides that, that is pretty much it for heavy GLs. Uh, the scoring sheet, I'll give you guys a sneak peek because I kind of forgot to do that over the past couple of videos. This is the scoring sheet. Uh, you can go and check this out yourself. It'll be in the description. Uh, if we score, if we sort by score, there you go. Cataphract, Wendigo, Marsilion, Regnant, Caraxes, Swarm. You can see there's a big gap, a three point gap between these two GLs for very, very clear reasons. Full court, not a good damage perk, and neither is anything down here except for this explosive light uh, Typhon, which is kind of an exception. So, um, yeah, I think that is all I have to say about heavy GLs. Um, the next weapon that we do is most likely going to be swords. I think that's what Chad voted for next. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this GL tier list.